Have you ever thought about giving up carbs? Maybe you've heard that cutting bread, pasta, fruit, and sugar can help you lose weight, feel energized, or even sharpen your focus. Or maybe you're just curious. What really happens inside your body when you stop eating carbs? Today, we're taking a wild ride through your amazing body to explore the science, the surprises, the benefits, and the risks of saying goodbye to carbs. So buckle up, grab a bottle of water, and let's dive into the high-speed world of metabolism, mood swings, bathroom mysteries, and maybe even a little stinky breath. What are carbs, anyway? Carbohydrates, or carbs for short, are one of the three main macronutrients your body uses for energy. The other two are fat and protein. But carbs? They're your body's favorite source of energy. When you eat bread, fruit, candy, or cereal, your digestive system breaks the carbs down into glucose, a type of sugar. That glucose heads straight into your bloodstream and powers everything, from your heartbeat to your brain waves to your burpees at the gym. But when you stop eating carbs, your body gets confused. No more glucose? Uh-oh, it scrambles to find a plan B. Enter ketosis, fat-fueled power mode. When glucose is gone, your body activates a backup system called ketosis. Instead of using carbs for energy, your liver starts breaking down fat into something called ketones. These tiny molecules become your new energy source. Imagine your body as a hybrid car. It runs smoothly on electricity, carbs, but when the battery's out, it switches to gas, fat. It still works, but differently. This fat-burning state is why people on low-carb diets often lose weight. But switching fuel types comes with a few complications. Low-carb versus keto. What's the difference? Low-carb diets come in many flavors. Some just cut back on white bread and sugar. Others go all in, like the ketogenic diet, which slashes carbs to just 20 to 50 grams a day. That's not much. One banana can have 27 grams. A slice of bread, around 15. So if you're on keto, you're skipping more than just dessert. You're rethinking every bite. Moderate low-carb diets keep you under 130 grams a day, which is still way below the 250 to 300 grams most people eat. Every bite counts, and it changes how your body works from the inside out. First surprise, you lose weight, but it's mostly water. Here's what happens in the first few days. Without carbs, your muscles lose something called glycogen, a stored form of glucose. Glycogen holds water like a sponge, so when it disappears, so does the water. You pee. A lot. People can lose 3 to 10 pounds in the first week of a low-carb diet, but don't pop the champagne just yet, that's water weight, not fat loss. Still, it's motivating. Your genes fit better, you feel lighter, and soon your body will start burning actual fat. But first, meet the keto flu. Your body isn't used to running on fat. As it switches fuel types, you might feel tired, cranky, dizzy, or foggy. This is called the keto flu. And no, it's not contagious, but it's real. Your body is missing carbs, but it's also losing electrolytes like sodium, potassium, and magnesium. You can feel headachy, exhausted, nauseous, moody, sore. Luckily, this flu usually only lasts three to seven days. Drinking electrolyte-rich fluids, eating salt, and resting can help. After that, your energy starts climbing again, sometimes higher than before. Brain fog. Then mental clarity? Your brain loves sugar, like loves it. Glucose is its favorite fuel. So when you cut carbs, your brain gets sluggish. You might feel forgetful or spacey. Your work slows down. You stare at your screen wondering why you opened it in the first place. But once your body adapts to burning ketones, something magical can happen. Mental clarity. Some people report laser focus, better memory and fewer brain crashes. It's like your brain switches to high-octane fuel, but getting there can feel like wading through molasses. Your belly and bathroom breaks. Let's talk poop. Carbs usually come with fiber, the part of plant foods your body doesn't digest. Fiber keeps things moving. 
no carbs equals less fiber equals possible constipation. Some people on low-carb diets go days without a bathroom visit. Others feel bloated or gassy. The solution? Eat fiber-rich, low-carb foods like leafy greens, spinach, kale, zucchini, avocados, chia seeds, berries in moderation. Also drink lots of water. Dehydration makes everything worse. Trust us on this. Stinky breath alert. Ever heard of a keto breath? When your body burns fat, it produces ketones. One of them, acetone, is released in your breath. It smells odd. Think fruity mixed with nail polish remover? It's harmless, but not fun. Some people also get dry mouth, which makes the smell worse. Stay hydrated, brush often, and chew sugar-free gum. The smell usually fades as your body adapts. Blood sugar drops, good and bad. Carbs raise your blood sugar. Cutting them lowers it. For people with type 2 diabetes or insulin resistance, this is amazing. Blood sugar stabilizes, insulin sensitivity improves, and medication needs might even go down. But if you don't have blood sugar issues, you might feel hangry, shaky, or lightheaded when your levels dip too low. That's called hypoglycemia, and it can be dangerous. Keep a small snack handy and check with a doctor before making big changes. What about your heart? Low carb doesn't mean all fat is fine. If you fill your plate with bacon, cheese, and butter, your LDL cholesterol, the bad kind, can go up. That's not great for your heart, but swap in healthy fats like avocados, nuts, seeds, olive oil, and fatty fish, and your HDL cholesterol, the good kind, can rise while inflammation drops. Low carb can be heart friendly if you do it wisely. Think Mediterranean-style keto, not all-you-can-eat bacon buffets. Mood swings and sad feelings. Carbs help your brain produce serotonin, the feel-good chemical that stabilizes your mood. When you cut carbs, serotonin can drop. That's why some people feel irritable, anxious, or even a little depressed at first. Your mood might balance out over time, but if you notice big emotional changes, talk to a health pro. Your mental health matters as much as your waistline. Your liver and kidneys, extra workload. In ketosis, your liver works overtime making ketones. If your liver is already stressed, say from fatty liver disease, a strict keto diet can make things worse. Same with your kidneys. Low carb diets increase uric acid, which can raise the risk of kidney stones or gout. If you've ever had either, you know, painful doesn't even begin to cover it. Bottom line, Check with your doctor before going keto, especially if you have pre-existing conditions. A powerful tool for seizures. Here's something most people don't know. The keto diet isn't new. Doctors started using it in the 1920s to treat children with epilepsy, especially when medication didn't work. For some kids, going keto reduced or even stopped their seizures. It's still used in medical settings today. So while keto is trendy now, it has a serious medical history. And it reminds us, food isn't just fuel, it's medicine. Should you cut carbs? That depends. If you feel bloated, foggy, or tired after eating carbs, or if you're dealing with blood sugar issues, cutting back might help. But if you're healthy and active, carbs aren't the enemy. Whole carbs, like fruit, vegetables, beans, and oats, are full of nutrients, fiber, and antioxidants. They power your workouts, boost your brain, and keep you satisfied. Instead of fearing carbs, focus on quality. Choose brown rice over white. Pick fruit over candy. Swap white bread for whole grain. Even small swaps can make a big difference. The grand finale. Listen to your body. So what really happens when you stop eating carbs? Your body transforms. First water weight, then fat loss. Your brain slows down, then fires up. Your mood might dip, then stabilize. Your breath gets funky, your bathroom schedule shifts, and your metabolism rewires itself. It's a wild ride, and it's not for everyone. Some thrive on keto, others crash. Some love low-carb life. Others miss their morning toast, and that's okay. The key is to listen to your body, not your friends, not a celebrity's, not a viral TikTok trend, you. If carbs make you feel energized and focused, 
great. If cutting them helps your health and happiness, also great. Just don't make food choices based on fear or fads. Your body is brilliant. Treat it with respect, fuel it well, and it'll carry you far. Carbs or no carbs. Thanks for joining this epic journey through the no carb zone. Whether you're curious, experimenting, or just along for the ride, remember, knowledge is power. And now, you know exactly what happens when you stop eating carbs. Stay curious, stay kind to your body, and if you eat a bagel tomorrow, we won't judge. <laughs>